All right, we are live. Hopefully you guys can hear me. A um, little bit of a different scenery here today for this live video. Uh, I just wanted to give my quick thoughts on this phenomenon known as the social media rat race. You guys probably all know what I'm talking about when I even say that term. It is this just never ending obsession from artists, bands, producers to get more subscribers, more likes, more interaction, more email addresses, more whatever it is on whatever platform you might be trying to um, blow up on and get more exposure on. Um, I just want to tell you guys that I have seen both ends of the spectrum. Okay, so this is from real people who email me who I've interacted with. And I've double checked their links and can verify that what they said was true. I have gotten emails from people who have over 300,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube and millions of views, you know, tons and tons of likes, tons of presence. And they've made maybe hundreds of dollars in their music career, even with that many eyeballs, that many people watching their social media and interacting with them. On the other side of that, I have also seen producers, musicians, bands who have less than 5,000 subscribers, even sometimes less than 2,500 subscribers who are making their full-time income off of their music, okay? So clearly right there, the number of people that you have following you, subscribe to you, liking your content, voting on your music, doesn't necessarily guarantee any income. It doesn't guarantee sales. It doesn't guarantee you're going to get... Um, a sustainable full-time income stream from your music, okay? The thing that separates the, you know, producers and the musicians that have hundreds of thousands of, of uh, subscribers but aren't making any money from the ones who have a small number of followers but are making full-time income is that two things, I believe. Number one, it's more important that you think about the quality of the followers that you're getting and also making sure they're the right followers, okay? Just trying to get as many subscribers and followers and people liking you as possible is actually not gonna do you any good because I notice with a lot of producers and musicians that do that, they end up trying to go for this approach of, let me just try to be all things to all people and make everybody like my music and try to appeal a little bit to everybody. What happens when customer service people do that? What happens when companies do that? What happens when bands do that? you're just gonna piss off everybody because you're trying to make everybody happy, which means that somebody's going to feel uh, like you're not catering to them and it's gonna be kind of watered down and not specialized and not really hitting the needs or sort of uh, scratching that itch for certain sort of subgroups of your uh, fan base, right? So nobody's really satisfied uh, and a lot of people are gonna feel alienated and not really sure what's going on with your music, okay? So first of all, it's not about just getting tons and tons of numbers. You do need to realize that when you put out your product and you put out your vision for your music, there's going to be a vast majority of the population that will not like it, will not dig it, aren't going to be into it. Just expect that from day one because you cannot make music that all people all over the place are going to love. But that's okay. Like Because what you're trying to do as you put out your music is you're trying to find your people, right? You're trying to find your uh, fans. You're trying to find your uh, potential customers down the road. So if you get people going, ah, I'm not really into it, not really my thing, that shouldn't be your immediate signal to go, oh, let me go try a different sound then. I, they didn't like that. That one guy on that one comment for one of my songs didn't like it. Let me do a different approach. And you constantly kind of chase your, your, you're chasing that approach of like, well, one person didn't like it out of, you know, 100 people that heard it. So I'm going to now change my complete um, approach with my music. It's a losing strategy. It will never get you where you want to go in your music career, okay? You have to have the confidence when you put out your music to know that even there are people out there that don't like the Beatles. There are people out there that don't care for Michael Jackson. There are people out there that are not into some of the most popular and widely known artists on planet Earth. Does that mean that they were failures and that they should have changed their approach and should have gone a completely different direction? No, we all maybe you don't love those artists, but we all love our artists that we do love because they stick with what they were good at, with what they really wanted to produce, with what with the message, with the artistic vision of what they really wanted to do. The fact that those kind of artists and, and musicians and bands had that confidence, that's really what it is. They had that confidence to say, this is what I wanna say, this is how I wanna say it, and I know there's gonna be an audience out there for me. 
when they stuck to their guns and they just continuously persisted in that path, you, you eventually saw that their fans, even if it's a small group, I don't care if you only have 10 fans right now or one, it doesn't matter. If you have one fan that's like, I love you guys, I love what you're doing, or if you're just a singular, singular producer, I love your music, keep putting it out. That one fan is going to tell his or her friends about your music. And if they love it, because they might have similar tastes because they're friends, they're going to tell their friends about it. That's how an organic movement grows. You cannot go into the marketplace thinking that every demographic, every age group, everybody is going to love your music. So get rid of that notion. Get rid of that idea. That is just not realistic. Okay. Be confident in your music. Be confident in your approach and know that the vast majority of human beings are not going to like your music. Okay. And that's also, I don't know if you would say that's true for the Beatles. And you know, I don't know if they've done a worldwide poll on that, but I would say definitely there are people, probably people even watching this stream right now. Maybe you're not a big fan of the Beatles. Okay. Every artist has their not haters, but just people who aren't interested in their music. So just have the confidence and just know that's okay. I already know that I'm not interested in pleasing everybody. I know there's going to be people that aren't into this. I need to focus on finding my people. I need to find my fan base, my customers, my people, right? So that's the first thing is not getting so worried about, well, because artists, everybody does this. They measure their worth in many ways by their social media status. Like, well, I only have a hundred subscribers. So I kind of look like a joke. Like I kind of look like I'm nobody, right? We all have that sort of tendency to think that that, that way these days, especially since social media is such a part of our lives, right? Our social lives. Um, and I know that if you've been just starting, then that's just where everybody has to start. But even if it's been a long time uh, and you only have a small group of people, but they're religiously following you, they're religiously into what you're doing, you're doing something right, okay? It doesn't matter that you have, that you don't have 300,000 followers. If you have a, just a, a religious core of people that are digging what you're doing and they're buying what you're doing and they're sharing your content and they're telling their, their friends about it and they're sharing with it and you're most importantly interacting with them, right? Not ignoring them, not going, ugh, I only have 100 followers, who cares about you guys? I, I want the big, big leagues. If you're that arrogant already in your, your career, you're going to die. It's just not going to work out for you. You need to grab a hold of those 100 people and say, thank you, guys. I want to give you guys some really cool content. I want to supply with you guys with some really cool stuff every single day or every single week, however you can put that schedule together. And appreciate those people, those small few people that are really following you. Those are your people. Those are the people that you should be connecting with and talking to and, and finding their opinions out, right? You really need to sort of key in on those not take them for granted and go, well, you know, I'm, I need to go get more and more people. Let me go remix this song and do a cover version of this and try to get all these different kinds of people to start following me. You already lost the focus. You already took your little following for granted and it's all going to get watered down, right? You got to stick with your core, your message, right? Okay. I've repeated myself enough there. So that's number one is it's not about the uh, quantity. It's about the quality of the people following you. But number two is monetizing your music. So for the example where I had a producer who has over 300,000 subscribers, but it's not making any money, he, you know, he's now learning about sync licensing. So he's starting to figure that out. But, you know, he's done remixes, he's done cover versions, he's tried to sell it on iTunes, and he's made some, you know, little money here and there. But it's not gotten him to the point where it got him out of his day job. And it's not a sustainable full time career for him. So he has not figured out that sort of how do I monetize this? So I'm not going to come here today and give you guys a sort of expertise opinion on how to monetize music, you know, through your YouTube channel or anything like that. That's not what I've done in my career. So I can't give you that advice. I can't tell you what to do in that, in that way. Um, all I can say is though, you better be thinking about that now, right? Before you have your really large following of core followers in the beginning, giving a lot of free content, a lot of your free music, um, behind the scenes stuff. Just putting yourself out there to get the attention from your core fans is a really important thing. But again, we're not just doing this for fun, right? We want this to become our full-time income. So that requires you to start thinking about this in a long-term play to think about what can I do down the road to monetize this music, this career, this thing that I'm doing. And these days with the internet, you don't have to do what most artists and producers were doing for the last 40 or 50 years, which was, you know how it is. You put out an album, you sell it, you go tour, you sell tickets, you sell t-shirts, you sell the merchandise, uh, maybe try to get some licensing. That's obviously something you can do. But those were like the only methods of monetizing your music for, you know, the last half of a, a century, basically, or even longer. But with the internet now, you have things 
where you can uh, create like memberships for your core fans where they can see, you know, exclusive content that you don't release to your YouTube channel or to your SoundCloud. Uh, you can have a sort of live webcam showing you producing your music, right? Where you only give that access to people who want to see you behind the scenes. Um, you can actually involve your fans in the creative process. Like maybe you want to have them uh, throw you some suggestions for your next song, right? Some lyric ideas or some song concepts and the best ideas in your inner circle of uh, exclusive fans get to participate in the creative process. Again, you can be as creative as you want to be. There might be some things where you're like, no, it's really my music. I don't want other people coming in. Great. Don't do that. But there are plenty of other ways that you can get involved with this. I mean, now these days you can get a fairly cheap 360 VR camera that you can set up again in your rehearsal space so that fans, like maybe you let fans watch the sort of, you know, YouTube live stream that's just 2D for free. But if you want to have the sort of like 3D experience where they can kind of really feel like they're in the room with you um, and they get extended access to your guys' rehearsals or whatever, right? Just come up with these kind of interesting ideas. Think about some really interesting exclusive things that you can offer to your fans, to those core religious group of fans that really love what you're doing. And think about it now before you monetize it, right? You don't want to be growing and growing and growing and then like, oh, crap, how do I start monetizing this now? And you have really nothing set up. Um, you want to kind of strategize this as you go into the future. So I can't tell you guys exactly what to do, what the best strategy is, obviously, because it's just, it's just not my world of expertise. I think I have some decent ideas for what would work, but I haven't sort of uh, had the lived experience to tell you, yes, this absolutely works. That doesn't. I can't give you guys that that wisdom just because I've not been on that side of the industry. Obviously, licensing, totally different story. I can tell you what works. I can tell you what doesn't. I can tell you the mindset that's going to get you to that long-term goal. I can tell you the mindset that it's going to have you burn out in a couple of months and it's not going to work out for you. Um, so that would be my, my, my advice and my thinking about the social media rat race, about getting too caught up in it, too worried about your numbers, too worried about the subscriber numbers or likes. Um, and, you know, by the way, I'll just with all due, uh, you know, transparency, I don't want to be involved in any of that stuff. I, that's why I don't go for the social media, you know, beauty contest, basically, to try to get all those likes and subscribers for my music career. I just know that that's a never ending hustle, which I know for some producers and artists, it might work out well. I just personally don't want to be involved in it. And that's why even with my YouTube channel here, I'm not obsessed with my numbers. I'm not obsessed with subscriber numbers or likes or any of that kind of stuff. I really only want to attract quality people, right? That's all I want for my channel because I know that what I'm saying and the amount of work it's going to take to succeed with music licensing is probably not for most 95% of producers out there. I think some of them might get excited when they first hear about it and think, wow, I'll get that theme placement and then I'm living on easy street. You guys know that it's more complicated than that. It takes a lot more work than that. It takes a lot more dedication and long-term persistence than that. So that's why I don't expect my channel to ever have a million subscribers because I don't think there are a million producers out there with that mindset, with that mentality that's ready to go and hustle that hard. So I don't expect this channel to be that big. And I never did from the beginning um, because I'm not looking for, you know, the huge amounts of followers. I want the small core of people that have that right mindset, that understand what it takes, uh, that resonate with what I'm saying and are willing to commit their free time, that very limited free time I know you guys have to creating this uh, full-time income stream for themselves. Um, so that's basically my personal views on that. That's what I think about the social media thing. I personally do recommend it. If those of you are uh, you know, stuck in that right now and you've been stuck in it for a long time and you're not doing anything with music licensing, like you're not even building up maybe a second album that your fans don't have to know about, your social media profiles don't have to be included on, but you can just start to get into the licensing world you're missing out. You certainly are missing out. And I think you're going to find fairly quickly if you have high quality licensable music and you're partnering with good companies, you're going to see the results piling in on this side of the industry probably much faster than it will happen on the other side. Okay. Can't guarantee it, but that's how it was for me. I mean, in my artist career, some of you guys watched my uh, journey through music licensing video a couple of weeks back. Um, in my personal band producing career, I was staying up till four in the morning, going to these you know, uh, studios and trying to basically be a sort of tag along onto somebody else's career and trying to get a placement that way and trying to, you know, show up with my guitar and like, please let me feature on your album and on your track. So I was just chasing other people's success uh, and trying to latch onto them. 
Um, and all it resulted in, in is me always smelling like smoke when I got out of the studio sessions, getting home super late, being tired, having to wake up the next day and drinking tons of caffeine and Red Bulls and monster drinks, dragging myself to work the next day and have nothing to show for it. No features. Even if I got a, a, um, a, uh, a little, you know, a guitar lick on an album or whatever like that was never getting paid for it. Certainly wasn't going to get any back end royalties from it. And it never opened up any opportunities for me in the long run. Excuse me. But that was just this spinning my wheels, sort of a, a part of my my career, enter music licensing, where very quickly I got contracts and checks. I was getting consideration fees. I was getting contracts. I was getting accepted into the licensing world and eventually started seeing those placements come in. So you might be seeing the same thing in your career where you're spinning your wheels, you're chasing that social media rat race, you're, you're hoping to get all those fans and followers. Nothing's working. You're not getting the results. You're not getting paid. You're not getting the exposure. And then you kind of, you know, dabble a little bit in music licensing. And lo and behold, you land a contract. You get a little bit of money in your pocket. You get your first couple of placements and you're like, okay, I get it now. You might at that point see what I saw and why I decided let's go with the path of least resistance, right? Why struggle? Why keep putting myself in those situations where I'm not actually building anything? I'm just chasing, right? In this scenario, you're just chasing. You're chasing something that may or may not be coming, right? In this scenario, you're building something, right? You're building a career based on the catalog that you build up with music libraries. So it's completely separate. And I do believe in many ways, this is what splits amateur producers from professional producers. Professional producers don't chase things. They don't always try to let me just try to get a feature on you or let me go try to pitch this to this A&R guy or here, give me, you know, take my music, uh, please get it placed. That's why I always say no to those emails because when somebody's like, Jesse, uh, I have some great music, man. Take all these tracks and just get them placed and I'll totally cut you in on it. They're chasing. Those are people that are not building anything. They're just trying to latch on to me, right? They're trying to latch on to my relationships. It's not, I'm not interested in that. Uh, some people might be interested in that, not me, okay? I want to empower producers to teach them how to build their own career so they can stand on their own. They don't have to rely on anybody else to have a full-time income for themselves. It's the only way to succeed. It really is. There is just no way you're going to constantly just chase other people's success. I mean, you might get some crumbs. I'll, I'll tell you that. there are. And I mean, living in LA as long as I did and being in the music business, good Lord, there are a lot of people that are just attaching themselves to other people. I mean, it's just like a leech fest. So many people are attaching themselves to successful and talented producers, artists, and bands, and just eating the crumbs that, you know, these people leave behind them without most of the time, without actually value offering any value. They're just hanging around and lurching around <laughs> and getting the sort of, uh, you know, the stuff that, uh, is left over essentially, or whatever the artist isn't aware of, you know? Um, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to be that person. You don't want your career to be latching on to other people or getting stuck in this rat race. I do encourage you guys start to build your career, start to build your music licensing catalog, start to develop your own relationships with people in this industry, get music CEOs to have or library CEOs to have your number plugged into their phone, have their, your email address in their inbox, right? As a favorite, as something, when they get an email from you, they open it quickly because I know you're only going to be delivering high quality, valuable tracks. That's the only way to do it, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. We got another great video coming for you guys tomorrow. So stay tuned. Uh, make sure you do subscribe, hit that like. I really do appreciate that. Um, and also click the bell because you guys will get the first notification when I do these live videos, which I don't do that often. Once in a while today, I had some more free time so I could do it. Um, but I also have great uh, weekly content coming at you guys with this, um, with this channel. So I do appreciate your guys' time. Uh, we'll talk soon.